Hi guys and welcome to today's episode of the Cool Peeps Top 10 Show. Today we are discussing 10 extreme cultural body modifications around the world. To the layperson, these may seem nonsensical and even horrifying, but each culture from which these modifications originate has its own perspective regarding the human body and the deep-seated belief that justifies the damages done. Starting off at number 10, we have head binding. Within the Vanuatu people of the Toman Island, a person with an elongated head is thought to be more intelligent, of higher status, and closer to the world of the spirits. The head binding process typically begins approximately a month after birth as the skull is most pliable at this time and continues for about six months. It is done by distorting the normal growth of a child's skull by applying force. At number 9, we have tribal fattening, also known as lebu. In Mauritania, a woman's size indicates the amount of space she occupies in her husband's heart. Lebu is intimately linked to early marriage and often involves a girl of 5, 7 or 9 years being sent to special fattening farms where older women or the children's aunts or grandmothers force them to eat excessively to achieve female roundness so that she can be married off as young as possible. A typical daily diet for a six-year-old will include two kilos of pounded millets mixed with two cups of butter as well as 20 liters of camel's milk. Matrons use sticks which they roll on the girl's thighs to break down tissue and hasten the process. Other Leblu practices include a subtle form of torture where two sticks are inserted at each side of a toe. When a girl refuses to eat or drink, the matron squeezes the sticks together, causing great pain. Ear stretching is at number 8. This is probably the most common practice on this list, whether it's through tapering, weights, dead stretching, or a quick and easy demo punch, many people around the world still believe in the art of ear stretching. For men in certain tribes, it was believed that the larger the hole, the higher the rank he had. For women, it was a coming of age ritual and something done for beautification purposes. Self-mummification is at number seven. The process of self-mummification is long and arduous, taking at minimum three years of preparation before death, but some Buddhist monks do it. Central to this preparation is a diet which involves eating just nuts, buds, and roots from trees. From a spiritual perspective, this regimen was intended to toughen the spirit and distance oneself from the common human world. From a biological point of view, the severe diet rid the body of fat, muscle, and moisture while also withholding nutrients from the body's natural biosphere of bacteria and parasites. The cumulative effect was to arrest decomposition after death. At number 6, we have foot binding. Foot binding in China is said to have been inspired by a 10th century court dancer who bound her feet into the shape of a new moon. For families with marriageable daughters, foot size translated into its own form of currency and a means of achieving upward mobility. The most desirable bride possessed a three-inch foot known as a golden lotus. It was respectable to have a four-inch feet, a silver lotus, but feet five inches or longer were dismissed as iron lotuses. The marriage prospects for such girls were dim. At number 5, we have crocodile scarification. Deep within Papua New Guinea, there is an ancient initiation tradition that turns boys not into men, but into crocodiles. They practice crocodile scarification, an initiation for boys entering manhood, during which their skin is cut and scarred to represent the skills of a crocodile. An ancient myth tells the story of how crocodiles migrated from the Sepik River onto land to eventually become humans. In recognition of this ancestral connection, the young men of the tribe are inflicted with hundreds of deep cuts in cascading patterns down their backs, arms, chests and buttocks to give their skin the look and feel of a crocodile's body. At number four, we have finger amputation. 
The Dani tribe of Papua New Guinea believe that the physical representation of emotional pain is essential in a grieving process. And so some female tribe members cut off the top of their finger upon attending a funeral. A woman will cut off the top of her finger if she loses a family member or child. The practice was done to both gratify and drive away the spirits while also providing a way to use physical pain as an expression of sorrow and suffering. At number three, we have teeth sharpening. The teeth sharpening ritual is most popular among the Makonde people in southeast Tanzania and northern Mozambique, the majority of ethnic groups in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Bemba of Zambia, and even the Yao of Malawi. For some, the ritual was done to initiate young boys and girls who had reached puberty into adulthood because at that age, they will be able to endure the pain to show that they were indeed ready for adulthood. For other tribes, the teeth sharpening ritual was a general part of their custom and any person belonging to such a tribe was expected to have sharpened teeth at an expected age. At number two, we have neck stretching. For members of the Kayan ethnicity, neck stretching begins as early as five years. At this age, young girls start wearing heavy brass rings around their necks. Over time, more and more rings are added, giving the effect of an elongated neck. But technically, their actions push down their collarbones. The tribe has practiced this custom for nearly a thousand years because they believe it makes women more attractive, which in turn helps them land a husband. And finally, at number one, we have lip plating. The lip plate has become a chief visible distinguishing characteristic of the Surma and Mercy people of Ethiopia and South Sudan, and it has made them a prime attraction for tourists. A girl's lower lip is cut by her mother or by another woman of her settlement when she reaches the age of 15 or 16. The cut is held open by a wooden stick until the wound heals, which can take around three months. It's up to the girl to decide how far to stretch the lip by inserting progressively larger plugs over a period of several months. The clay plates are meant to symbolize a woman's strength while also displaying their social maturity. And that's all we have for you today. Don't forget to like this video, share it with friends, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be back tomorrow with a new top 10 list for you.